Hello and welcome to the Abscondo Podcast. This is Mark. I want to ask you a question today. What do you think is the opposite of love? I think most people would probably say it's hate, right? But I want to talk with you about how it's actually, um, how according to Course in Miracles at least, which is where I get a lot of, of this, what, what I discuss on this show, um, the opposite of love is actually fear. Now you talk about fear, most people think the opposite of fear would be what? The opposite of fear would be hope. So I want to shake these notions up today. And the reason I'm doing this is because, you know, what are we talking about here? Why are we even discussing love and hate and hope and fear? I think it's because we want to be happy. We want to live in a, in, a, in a way that we feel joy all the time. We feel peaceful. We feel safe. We feel like everything is in our life is how it's supposed to be, that we live in abundance. And what I've found through everything I've studied and what I've put in the practice and lived is that it is entirely possible, it's available to anyone to live in abundance and happiness and joy and health with a few changes to your basic mindset. And I know that you know, what my talks are not very popular, my, my, the, my writing is not very popular, and the reason is because I'm asking people to think about uh, very simple, fundamental things and, and even change some things. And I'm asking people who actually want to be happy and who want to, um, to escape suffering and crisis to be happy now and to be living according to spiritual truth and wisdom. So let's start with the idea of, you know, the conventional wisdom, the kind of cliche notion that the opposite of love is hate. Think about the concept of hate. You know, why would you ever hate, hate someone, hate a situation, or whatever it may be? And I think it's because you know, if, if you're like if you're passing someone on the street and someone's being a jerk and they're talking too loud or whatever, you know, you might say, "Oh, I hate that that person," but you don't really hate the person because they don't really have any impact on your life, right? So, so what I'm going to submit here is that is that hatred. I guess it's a real thing to those who 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 well to those who value who make fear real because you can't hate someone unless you give them power through fear in other words if you say that you hate your your boyfriend your girlfriend husband wife for example it's because you you fear that um, whatever they're doing or saying may lead to you not being safe It may ruin your life. Like, for example, if someone's flirting with someone else or whatever, you might say, I hate you for that because really what you're saying is that I I perceive my safety and my future to be based on you not doing that. And I'm so shaken up through fear that it manifests as hatred toward you. Okay, so what what A Course in Miracles teaches is that every, every negative emotion, such as hatred or jealousy, and every other one, every other emotion or, or uh, you know, anything having to do that's negative that brings you down, depression or whatever, it all flows from fear. And, you know, what is fear? Why do we fear? Well, um, you know, every, every species, I suppose, or every animal has a sense of fear, and, and, and so do we. It's perfectly natural and healthy, you might say. And of course, in nature, if, if you're going to be eaten by a shark or, or bitten or chased by a bear, the only healthy natural response would be fear, because then you have that fight or flight response. So you can deal with the situation. But fear needs to be based on an actual situation that's right there in front of you, not some perceived future event. Like I might go broke, I might lose my spouse, I might lose my job, my country might fall apart, um, you know, fascism might come, I might die from coronavirus or whatever. These are f- future based fears. And when you make that kind of fear real, that mind based fear, the idea of something happening in the future that might happen, then 
what happens is, is love becomes impossible. Everything that love is and does becomes impossible. You can't, you're not giving, you're not, you're not creative, you're not understanding and forgiving. You're not calm, you're not, a, you're not even great to be around. You're boring, you have no interest in something, no passions. You're not feeling well, you're ill, because when fear takes over your body, what happens? You know, your, your mind goes active and then you feel that, that fear and your, heart, your heartbeat accelerates. You can't sleep at night, you wake up and think about it, so you're losing sleep. You may drink more, you may do drugs, you may eat poorly. All these things happen because of fear. And it's easy to, to sit here and say, you know, don't fear. And that doesn't work. It doesn't work. It's not going to change your, your relationship with fear because you still think it's all real. So a spiritual awakening is when you realize that that mind-based fear, that future-based fear, that that stuff has no actual power in reality. The world tells you it does. You're constantly being, being threatened that you're going to be punished for something. You're being rewarded for something or at least promised something in the future. And so, um, basically, you're, you're manipulated, you're controlled, you're domesticated through fear, through artificial fear of what might happen to you in the future. The thing is, if you get rid of that fear, and how do you get rid of it? By cutting off the sources of fear. So think about news. Everything in the news is about fear. Every story is about something that you should be afraid of or that happened yesterday that, you, you know, oh my God, this might happen to you or whatever. Stop watching the news. That's easy. Stop watching any, you know, any feed, any, inf any information feed, or stop talking about things that give you that fear-based reaction. If you feel your heartbeat accelerate and you slip into that fear, it can be addictive to someone who's used to that feeling. You know, you get a little bit of a high from that. You want more. You want more fear. Oh, my God. <laughs> but that's not going to get you any, any closer to being happy or joyful or healthy or where you want to be in life or loving or, or just in a good place. It always takes you away from that good place. So whenever you have that reaction of fear, it's an addiction. And like every addiction, you got to cut out the source. So consuming an information source that makes you fearful, watching images of police on TV, on the news, uh, talking to a friend who's worried about everything, um, you know, these, it's like drinking a bottle of wine and expecting not to be a little bit drunk. You're going to be a little bit fearful when you consume fear. So when you realize the unreality of that mind-based stuff, and the only way to realize it is to cut it out and see what happens. You know, just start living in the present moment. Start living from love. And tell the truth all the time. Don't do anything stupid. Don't attack someone. Don't shame and blame someone. Don't manipulate people. What you're going to find out is that you're perfectly safe and happy. So that fear actually is an illusion. It actually, uh, there's nothing real about it, amazingly. So let's talk about fear in terms of, you might say, well, what's the way to overcome fear? Well, be hopeful. And that's like another cliche, like, like hope is a good thing, right? I really hope it's going to be okay. And I'm going to tell you that hope is just as devastating as fear. Now, that sounds crazy at first, but think about it. When you hope for something, what are you doing? You're looking for the future. You're looking for something to happen in the future. Everything's going to be all right. The money's coming. The right person. I'll meet the right person someday. Um, you know, justice is coming. It's going to be okay someday. I hope so. I pray for it. But what's happening is you're giving yourself a little bit of a boost in the short term. Again, like drinking a bottle of wine. And then there's a hangover when it doesn't quite happen the way that you expect or hope. And that's what hope does to you. It makes you feel a little bit of a boost of, of maybe, yeah, it's going to be okay. And then you crash the moment it doesn't happen or the moment you start doubting it or the moment you go back into fear. So what I'm suggesting is living in a way where you cut out the, the thought system of hope and the thought system of fear and what's left. You might think that you're that I'm asking you to duck your head in the sand, right? Like, things are really happening. We should really be involved. No. What's happening is that your head, your head is in the sand if you're thinking about hope and fear all the time. 
What I want you to do is take your head out of the sand and look around and notice that, that the present moment is here and here you're perfectly safe. And you can begin to notice how you actually feel. Do you feel good right now? If not, maybe it's something you did yesterday or today or this morning. Maybe the diet needs to be changed. Maybe some exercise, maybe better sleep, maybe less drinking, maybe less work, maybe more work. You know, what adjustments can you make in the present moment to make yourself get to a place where you feel good, where you don't need that addiction to pull you through? You don't need that hit of fear or hope to get you through. You just feel good. Um, you know, th th these are changes that can be made in the present moment. There are things you can do right now, the first step toward a better reality. And by changing the present moment, you, your life slowly gets better, you know? So you don't have to wait for or hope for that future. You can make it good now, even despite what's going on in the world. The world has never been sane. The world's always been insane and crazy. Um, you cannot get your happiness and love from, from other people. It's got to come from within. You got to know the source of that stuff. It's, it's, it's divine. It's from the spirit, the soul. So this is sort of a spiritual awakening. Um, this is, you know, coming into spiritual, you're, you're spiritually conscious. And as you get there, you understand the message of Jesus Christ when he, when he you know, turned the other cheek, when something, when you're attacked, turn the other cheek. You're not vulnerable in eternity. Um, this is the message of, of, of Jesus dying on the cross and the resurrection, that, that you're eternally safe, your soul, your spirit, your true identity. So there's nothing to fear in the world. And furthermore, even as you are here, you might worry, well, I want my life to be good. I don't want to be killed. You're not going to be killed because you're born, everyone's born with free will, right? Everyone is born free. So you don't have to submit to corruption. You don't have to take the vaccine. You know, you're not, you don't have to get sick if you're not stressed out and living in fear. You can live a long, fulfilling life. And it's very important that, that, you know, it's not just cutting stuff out. It's not just cutting out the bad habits. It's not about cutting out fear and hope because then you're going to sit there and be bored. What you have to do, what I found out from firsthand, I've, you know, I go off course and I come back. You have to focus on creating. I talk about the thought system of love. One of the core, the core things that true perfect love is, is creative. If you think about the concept of God, what is God? Now, I'm not talking about a man in the sky. I'm talking about this, the, the idea of God or, or, or the Tao, according to Tao Te Ching. There's different concepts and words for it, the source. And what it is fundamentally is it's a creative force. It's the force of life, right? The force of life happening, which is creating. And you are life. That's your identity. So the way to spend as much time as possible in this life is to create. And that can be art, it can be a business, a new product, it can be um, you know, speaking and, and writing and things like this, but it can also be raising children properly, putting your, your energy and your attention into, into lovingly raising children or, or nurturing friendships or teaching this stuff to people. Because every time you do this, what you're doing is you're enabling that person to be a creative force and it multiplies. And this is how you, be, how you become immortal, through, through your art, but also through your love that you spread around and people that you know. And this is how your life means something. When you, when you die one day, they're going to know what you stood for. You're going to live on, right, beyond this life. So I, don't, I wouldn't be able to, to um, escape addictions and, and depression. I wouldn't be able to escape hope and fear. And in fact, I haven't been able to if I'm not focusing on creating, right? You got to keep creating, even if it's just in private, even if there's no real hope, no real hope that it's going to be, you're going to be famous. Just do the, create, the creative stuff the best you can. You're going to get better and better at it with no planned outcome. And I hope, I hope that really helps because that, you know, that, get, that has gotten me out of a dark place. You know, it's been a tough time, let's face it. Anybody who's going to be checking Facebook and, and Instagram and, and Telegram and, and the headlines and all this, if you're checking that stuff and you're addicted to it, 
um, delete it. If, if, there's, if there's any, again, if, there's any, if you get any fear-based reaction or if you live in this world of hope, let it go. Whatever's going to happen is going to happen, and it's going to come to you, as, and you're going to know all about it when it happens. You know, you cannot allow yourself to be thrown up and down, mostly down, because of hope and fear, um, right? So let's just live in the present moment, learn about what love is and what love, love does, how it flows from within, how it is what you are. Love and God, it's the same thing. Same thing as you, soul, spirit, you divine, create, there's nothing to be afraid of and nothing to hope for because you're already complete. There's nothing to hope for. You're already complete. I'm going to leave it at that for today. And like always, I'll leave you with an abscondive song. You can find my music wherever you normally find music. This is from my 2020 album called Life Light, and it's a song called Strangers. Thank you so much for joining me. days I'm not afraid of strangers Sometimes I even look them straight in the eye And these days I'm not afraid of saying Just what exactly is on my mind I'm taking what is mine Do what I want to with my time Yes, I define my way alone I've never been quite this wide open Just ready to embrace whatever comes my way But these days I walk these streets hoping You're not just a beggar who's gonna ask me for some change Keeping what is mine Do what I want to with my time I guess we have to find our way alone days I'm not afraid of strangers Some days someone's gonna take me by surprise and These days I'm on my guitar playing I don't care if you're listening or if you have the time I guess I'm doing fine Do what I want to with my time that's how I found my 